Hi, I want to tell you a little bit about my life so you get to know me a little bit. I grew up in Bulgaria. I grew up skiing and I had a great childhood. I also started my first windsurf school business at the age of 18 on the Black Sea of Bulgaria where my brother and I grew up as kids. I really loved that sea and um, it was my way of spending more than just our regular two, three weeks with the sea. So at the age of 18, it was one of the first private businesses out of um, post-communist Bulgaria. So my entrepreneurial spirit um, took over and I started a little windsurf school there, which is actually still running and uh, very successful. After that, I went to the American University in Bulgaria and I graduated in uh, business administration, made my parents very proud. And um, I got a job with a large advertising agency in Bulgaria where I had um, the opportunity to work with some amazing brands at a really young age, which gave me great experience in sales promotions, uh, sales events, and the advertising world. And after that, I came to um, the U.S. I did my master's in international marketing in San Diego. And um, I, I came to Tahoe to work for EXL Media, which is a media agency during the dot-com. Again, I had the pleasure of working with some amazing brands and had a blast doing that. And then I became the marketing director for Diamond Peak Ski Resort, um, which was a really, really fun job. I got to ski and play golf and do a lot of uh, great marketing. And then I started my own company, Out and About Marketing, in 2009, where I had the pleasure to work with even more amazing brands and do social media and digital marketing on a daily basis, which is something I love. The rest of the time, I live in Tahoe. I spend it in the outdoors, whether it's biking, hiking, paddleboarding, or skiing. I really enjoy the outdoors. And that's um, a little bit about me. And now let's get to the presentation. Hi, I'm Milana Rigos, and today I want to talk to you about 10 easy steps to get started with social media marketing. Why you should even think that social media marketing is good for your business? Well, here are 10 reasons I think social media it can be really, really good for your business. First off, you, you build relationships. Second, thanks to social media and the technologies available, it doesn't matter if you're a small business or a large business, you kind of have the same opportunities to get your product out to your customers. It's a great way to monitor your competitors and see what they're doing. Your customers are already there, so you might as well be there as well. It's great for search engine optimization. It's um, a, a phenomenal customer service channel. It will lower your traditional marketing cost. Uh, it will increase your reach, increase your revenues, and increase your customer loyalty and shorten your life cycle. So um, thanks to social media, a lot of businesses are seeing great successes and actually I'll give you some stats here. 82% of small businesses say word of mouth marketing is the most effective way to market their business and find new customers. Well, guess what? Social media is exactly that word of mouth marketing. So I'll take you on a journey of why it's important and how you can get going with social media marketing that's not overwhelming and it's really, really easy to do. So first off, obviously, there's a lot of people on social media. Uh, the latest stats show that, you know, Facebook is over a billion, YouTube is over 800 million. So there's a lot of people. One out of every seven people on Earth is currently on Facebook. So a lot of people are spending their time every day. They check in, they connect with friends and family. And as a business, you may want to be in the same place and um, connect with them where they're already spending time. Social media is also very time consuming and uh, from a customer perspective as well as from a business perspective, that's a serious consideration for businesses and it's just that it adds on to our busy everyday lives as to how much time um, social media takes. It also uh, helps form habits which are quite interesting habits in these statistics but um, the fact that 7% will check a message during an intimate moment is a little bit um, strange to me. So just be mindful of how addictive social media is. I'm sure you've seen it with um, young, young kids, young adults, always on, on their phones and always um, texting 
and spending time on social media. So there's a right and a wrong way to um, actually spend time on social media. So be mindful of this. It um, has been proven that it changes life offline. And um, for example, 18% are more likely to work at, at a gym or a health club out of the people who um, use social media. So there's obvious correlation between social media and offline activities. Social media also helps uh, businesses and um, a lot of um, small as well as large businesses are finding social media a very successful way to connect with customers. So um, we'll talk today about how you can get going with these channels and how you can connect with your customers with social media. Now let's go through some definitions first. Um, there's a lot of definitions for what social media is. I'll give you my mind definition, which is really short, but it's pretty much uh, using technology to connect and communicate. It's um, something we've been doing all along. We've always communicated and talked to people, but now we have this new technology and uh, which allows us to extend our communication and conversations even more. I went ahead and created a video of um, social media history and how we actually got here. So I want to show that video um, today. So um, here we go. Check it out.
So, you know, guys, what was interesting about that video is that I actually created that video in 2011 when I was presenting to the American uh, Institute of um, Floral Designers and um, hence the flower at the end. But can you just imagine how things have changed since 2011? So if this um, history of social media made you feel a little bit more comfortable about the fact that you're already doing it, you are already using email, you've probably used PayPal, you've you've done all this um, probably Wikipedia, you've, you've read about um, and used about some of this, so you're probably um, already quite familiar with some of this. So I want to show you a few ads uh, from old advertising age um, that actually made me laugh and um, how soon is really too soon to start drinking coca-cola right um, marketers were pushing messages um, and ads to us going back to the Mad Men days the people just got tired of um, all the lies honestly television benefits your children of course Motorola wants your children to watch more television right well I think it's pretty funny but um the reality is that cocaine to take drops um, are instant cure. So what happened here is that our society um, got really, really tired of all these lies coming from advertising, coming from the government. So um, thanks to technology now, if this, if this is your business in the middle, what happens is all these people now, it used to be that the business would send mass, mass marketing messages to all these people. But today, thanks to technology, it's a two-way dialogue, so people can actually talk back to the business. In addition to that, people can actually exchange messages with each other. So being in the center of it, if you have a good brand reputation monitoring system, you can actually pick up on all these conversations and see what people are saying about you. But if you're not even part of these um, conversations, you won't have a clue what people are saying about your business. So it's really, really important, even if you don't do anything else, with social media it's just really important to keep a pulse on what people are saying about you and just being able to um to glean some of that feedback for your business so trust we talked about trust uh, marketing government trust um, has become a huge issue in our society and because of that we trust each other a lot more than we trust um, people and companies and um, and, and brands and, and government. So we actually trust people a lot more. So 92% of consumers trust word of mouth above all other forms of advertising. Actually, trust towards advertising is at a low 14%. But 92% um, would trust word of mouth. So that's you and me talking at a party about a product um, or you just going to Yelp and reading a review from somebody who don't even know. But it's... Um, called virtual trust and you actually trust that person a lot more than the official source of information um, because of uh, what we've gone through as a society. So because of that trust, uh, thanks to Facebook and Twitter and emails, we have a likelihood to buy and a likelihood to recommend that is um, at a quite substantial rate higher than, um, than if you're not if your customers are not part of your social media marketing efforts. So it's really important as a business to start to stop doing outbound interruption marketing and start working on your inbound marketing by pr providing relevant contextual information to people when they need it and on the device and platform they use. So social media, social networks like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Pinterest are the places where social interactions happen, discovering and sharing. And 75% um, of people are somewhat or li highly likely to share content they like online with friends, co-workers or family. So people are spending a lot of time sharing a lot of content and ultimately leading to buying and recommending decisions. In addition to um, the companies can enjoy a lot of free research thanks to social media. So it's really great tool for you to jump online and see how your competitors are doing, but also tap into your customers and um, get some information from them that before used to be just really expensive marketing surveys. So here's an example of vitamin water. Uh, what they did is um, they went to Facebook 
and they created a contest with their fans and they asked fans to actually create their next flavor. So super smart, they uh, got a lot of people involved and here's the ultimate uh, product that came out of this contest. Um, so that they saved a lot of time with research and development. They were smart to put their Facebook logo made by fans for fans on Facebook, which obviously carried that virtual trust in, in the product. And uh, I know I was buying it just because it was made by fans of um, Facebook, not by the company itself. So great way to tap into your customers. I did a, a sticker contest actually with Diamond Peak Ski Resort and I asked my fans to create a sticker for Diamond Peak and I chose the um, winning design and I turned them into actual stickers and it saved me graphic design and it saved me time from dealing with it. I just went directly to my fans. So um, free research is amazing, powerful way to use social media. You also stand to uh, bring more traffic to your website. All these social networks out there will ultimately result in more traffic to your website and um, you can use Google Analytics or whatever web measuring tool you use to uh, measure how much more traffic you're bringing to your website. We saw that one in seven people on earth is on Facebook, so obviously a lot of eyeballs. Um, you reach about three people out of every four internet users in the US just with Facebook, so obviously a very powerful place to be from a company standpoint. One out of every eight minutes online is spent on Facebook. A lot of time, a lot of people addicted to this social network. 24 hours of video a minute is uploaded to YouTube. And Twitter gains 300,000 new users every day. And that's, again, some um, older statistics for you. So I'm sure that's changed today. LinkedIn is a great business-to-business -business, uh, social network. It's amazing to, to, for you to uh, build your, your, your own network, um, obviously look for jobs or find new um, employees. And over half of the internet users read blogs. I'm sure that's actually more because a lot of websites currently are blog-based. Uh, people may not be realizing that they're actually reading a blog-based website. Another great reason for Companies to use social media is customer service. Um, it could work really, really well. And I'll tell you a couple of stories here, personal stories with customer service. One of them has to do with Zappos. You might have heard me tell this story before, but what happened with, with uh, Tony, he's the CEO of, of Zappos. I asked him um, if he was carrying a certain brand of shoes, not even expecting a response back. Within 48 hours, he responded back to me. He put me in touch with... Um, his VP of business development and um, within two, three months, there were 17 plus items for Blundstone, which is the type of shoes I was actually looking for my husband. So customer service is amazing. I love the fact that I can connect with the CEO directly and um, tell him what I need. It's great from a company's perspective to use as business development tool. The second story has to do with Chrysler. It's really a long story, but um, to keep it short, what happened is uh, we ended up purchasing a Chrysler lemon truck. And um, after exhausting all kinds of traditional ways of getting in touch with the company and resolving the situation, I used blogging and Twitter to get to the company and um, got to the um, head of customer service care who um, took care of us and um, made good on, on the product. And we ended up as uh, happy customers with Chrysler and we enjoy our Chrysler truck. But it was all thanks to tweets and blogging that we um, were able to solve our situation. From a company's perspective, uh, social media appeals really um, a lot because of um, the fact that a lot of it is inexpensive or free. But I just want to give you a warning here. It's not really free. There's actually human cost involved with social media. There's some third-party platforms involved, um, so it's not really free. Um, I, I read some stats that about 25% of digital budgets are dedicated to social media these days. So keep that in mind. You, it will take people. It will take some uh, money. It will take um, content development. It will take um, some investment to do your social media and do it well.
However, if you do get engaged on social media, you, ex you can expect to see some new bu business coming from um, these three channels as um, reported by the Social Media Marketing Report. So social media does work and um, from, a, from a brand's perspective, it's a great way to connect with um, new customers, um, increase your reach, increase your customer loyalty and um, gain some new leads. And finally, guys, it's the future. It's the way people expect to communicate with brands and companies. It's the way I expect to communicate. It may not be Facebook five years from now. It may not be Twitter. But the, the fact is that we will have some way of um, talking and communicating that is um, it's the way we are used to now. It's just going to get better and better. Okay, so here we go. Your 10 steps as to how you can get going with social media marketing for your company. So you can save money and improve your customer service and increase your revenues. Well, the very first one is obviously you need to commit to it. It's going to be a long haul and um, you need to commit time and resources to do it right. The second step is to start by listening. Listening on social web is very, very important from a company's perspective because it will allow you to understand where your customers are. are. It will allow you to um, see what they're saying and it will help you determine what kind of a strategy you need to implement for your company. There's a lot of um, tools out there available to help you with that listening part. Radiant 6 is uh, something I, I like to use it's a great tool, but you can even start with something simple as free as mention and just put your company's name and your competitor's names in there and see what kind of mentions you start getting. So highly recommend that um, you pay attention to the listening part. It's something I see a lot of companies not doing and not being interested in. And I guarantee you, you'll end up wasting a lot more time by going to uh, directly into sharing your content out than if you just spend some time first listening to what's going on on the social web. Number three, read, read, and read. There's a lot of resources out there and things are changing on a daily basis. So a lot of blogs, there's a lot of videos, there's a lot of tutorials. Start by reading. There's um, great free information out there. So um, sign up for a few great sources and um, start educating yourself. Another really, really important thing to do before you get going with your social media marketing. Number four, make a plan. Start with your goals. If you don't start with your goals and if you don't decide how you're gonna measure your goals, you're probably going to fail. Or what's gonna happen is you're gonna go three, four months with your social media marketing and then you're gonna say, I don't really think it's doing anything for me and I'll just pass it on to the intern who um, will just update the Facebook and the Twitter and we'll call it good. Not a good idea. Make a plan as to what you're going to do on social media. Are you going to um, just increase your reach? Are you going to um, share, spread the word? Are you going to maybe try to generate new leads? Um, what are you going to do with social media? Maybe you want to improve your customer service. You know, whatever it is, you're going to um, need to create some kind of a plan and set some be benchmarks and measurements as to how you're going to measure your successes. You need to, um, at least once a month, take a look at your reports and see where you're going and make adjustments to your plan. Number five. Remember that you are the expert. You are the expert in your field and people would want to know what you can tell them on the social web. You are the best in your field. Just remember that. And what you need to do with social media is just get that word out to um, other people as to what you know and um, share your great knowledge and information with everybody else. Number six start small. You can't start with um, t 10 uh, social networks and expect to grow each one of them 
really fast. Start small, start with the main one, start with Facebook, start with Twitter, start with LinkedIn, depending on your business. But start small, grow your community, do it well, and then move on to the next thing. Really, really important. I'd much rather you do a good job on one social network than on five and uh, be spread too thin. Number seven, content is king. You can be provocative. You can stand outside of the box. You have to be fearless when it comes to content. Not everything is going to work. You have to do something different. Uh, obviously, quite provocative um, ads from Nike, but you do not use the shoes, right? So content is king. Relevancy is queen. Um, people want to hear things um, on their own time, on their own terms that are of interest to them. So you have to find out what's going to click with, with people. Number eight, make it easy to share. Use the tools that are available to make things easy to share. Obviously, this is a scary slide, uh, but there's um, a lot of tools that would make your content easy to share. It's much better to have content that's shareable in case you do produce something that's really outstanding. Make it easy for people to share it. That's going to use that viral nature of the internet and share your content. If you don't know how to do this, just hire someone with some uh, um, high-tech skills and uh, put them to work. When you do find something great to share, it's going to spread like wildfire around the world. And this is the power of social media. It can share within seconds go a couple of times around the globe and um, this is exactly why social media is so important. So uh, I wish you the best with finding good content and um, making it easy to share for people. Number nine, remove the roadblocks. This is an actual capture from an actual website here in Lake Tahoe and I have no idea how to type that first part of the capture. I don't know what you human you have to be, human or robot, um, obviously it's impossible for me to type that up. So don't make it difficult for people to access your website. Don't make it difficult for people to share your content. Remove any kind of roadblocks. People by nature are lazy and they want to do something really, really simple. So if it's a one click share, I'll do it. But if you make me jump through hoops like this, I've left your website and I've gone to look for your competitors. Number 10, have fun with it. Social media is about fun. Social media is about connecting with other people. It's about establishing relationships. So just have fun with it. It's not a chore. It, it, it's a great tool to um, connect with other people, meet some great folks, and um, have fun with it. A little extra point, just be yourself. Be authentic on social media. Be transparent about who you are. That's me skiing in Tahoe, paddle boarding, or being on my iPhone down the beach. And um, I use photos of myself. People know who I am. I connect with business and with personal friends everywhere because I have nothing to hide. I am who I am. Once people get to know me, it's much easier for them to do business with me than um, otherwise if, if I'm putting some kind of wall behind between me and them. So from a brand perspective, you need to do the same thing. It's, it's about being transparent. It's about being authentic. It's about being who you are because no one else can be you. Only you can be you. So be yourself and separate yourself on that advantage. So I guarantee you, you can do this. Um, you can um, start with a Facebook page if that's what your business requires or you can start with a blog it's not that difficult it's not that complicated to help you get through a social media strategy I developed seven free social media strategy tips you can sign up on ironaboutmarketing.com and I'll send them to you once a week I've also developed three free Facebook webinars um, that talk about the timeline image best practices and some free Facebook apps to make your Facebook page a lot more engaging. So to get all of this, um, it's free. You can sign up on Out and About Marketing. So thank you. Um, thank you guys for today. And um, let's take a look at um, some of the questions that have come through the chat room. And um, I'll respond to these. And um, if we don't have time, we'll, uh, I'll respond to all of your questions via email.
Well, there are a lot of questions that came through. So how do I choose which networks to start with? Well, that's an excellent question. I think the best approach is um, twofold. One is by listening online to see where people are talking about you. And two is to ask your current customers what networks they already use. So you can ask them with an email or do a survey and um, find out what networks they're currently using. At the same time, do some listening online and um, discover where people are talking about you. The majority of your customers will become your social media fans and followers, but you can also reach out to new people. So don't forget to ask to, to, to tap into the new people's resources by listening online and seeing where they're hanging out. Does social media work for business to business? Yes, absolutely. It used to be B2C, business to consumer, and B2B, business to business. But today is actually P2P and it's people to people. Now, obviously not the same social networks will work for business to business as they will for business to consumer. So it, I'm just uh, throwing this out there, but LinkedIn, Twitter, and blogging are known to be very uh, well suited for business to business environment. What is the value of social media? Great question and a great topic for another webinar. So sign up on adonaboutmarketing.com and um, we'll have more webinars on what's the value of social media and how you can measure your efforts. Can I ha have the intern handle my social media marketing? Well, um, I have seen good successes with interns and I've also seen some uh, failures uh. with interns. My question to you is, would you actually recommend and leave your brand presence in the hands of an intern if he's not well versed into what your company is all about. Um, young people are obviously uh, more used to the technology but at the same time they need some business advice and business guidance as to what the company is all about. So um, it, they could uh, work very well for you but um, you also may need to provide some additional training to just make sure the intern is at the um, level that you need them to be. So that's all the time we have for today. Um, thank you very much. And like I said, I will um, get to the rest of your questions via email. Thanks a lot and have a great day.